I got my little brother Ty over here at the farmhouse with me. He's been up visiting for the new year. Younger. <laughs> He's my little bro. And we're going to get some of these beams I took out of the ceiling of the farmhouse and we're going to use them for the top of the island here. We're going to plane these down. So the first order of business is to make sure all the nails are out. Because we don't want those to catch the planer and mess up the blade. We were about to clean the mess of boards up over here, but we we're about to make a ton of sawdust. We're gonna run these boards through the thickness planer here and get the top surface real nice and cleaned up, and it'll be better than sanding it. We might have to sand a little if it gets splintery here and there because this wood is really dry, but I don't think it will. I think it'll clean up real nice. Go the wrong way. All right, that's good. So just wanted to show you the difference here. We've got the plain board, and then we've got the rough cut lumber that hasn't had anything done to it. The wood is really pretty underneath, almost doesn't even need sanded after we run it through the planer. And this has got a lot of work that needs done if we're gonna be using it for countertop and island. Now we're over here at the table saw, and what we're doing is we're just trimming about a quarter inch off of each end. That way we've got a nice flat edge that's clean that we can glue up. You could use a joiner to do this, but mine is small and a board this long, I find it tends to rock a little bit and I don't get a clean cut. So everything is playing down and cut down to where we need it. Jamie is here to inspect to see if she likes the grain of the wood and the color. We've got a few holes we're gonna have to fill, not holes and things with resin, but I think it's gonna be all right. Well, I really want a natural wood top because I'm going to be painting the base and I realize that it may not be super practical, but I'm willing to try it out and then worst case scenario later on we can put something else in. Or sand this down and stain it or whatever we need to do. You know, we can refinish this a hundred times. Maybe not a hundred, maybe only fifty. It might get thin after a hundred. I know a guy. <laughs> Alright, so what are we doing next? Okay, so next I'm going to flip all these boards back over from the pretty side and we're gonna put some pocket hole screws in, lots of glue, then clamp everything together. And these boards here, we're gonna squeeze everything into submission so it's nice and flat and we get all those warps and twists out of the boards. So how come you're not using biscuit joints? I could, but I don't know, I didn't feel like it today. And you know what? I've never had super great success with old wood and biscuit joints. Some them. guys do, but you know, this is so dried out, I don't think it's gonna matter. Are you gonna use crank jig? Yep. Okay. All right, we got the loud heater in the background, but we're just gonna be using the Craig jig. And we got the, uh, basically the waste or the ugly side of the board here. I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put some pocket holes in. All right, now all the pocket holes are drilled. We're going to run some glue right along here. I'm gonna give me a bead of glue and then I'm gonna, Ty's gonna give me a bead of glue and I'm gonna smooth it out. We're using Type Bond 2 wood glue. It's my favorite. So 
as I clamp this, your job is to grab your hand over here and just kind of force that down. Nice this and flush. Not level. And you're feeling, what you're doing is you're feeling with your fingers on the bottom, because that's the one that we need to be nice and level, this is probably the, a tie the bottom job. side. Yeah, but this one over here is way not level. We'll lift it up. I can't. Gotta get your, sometimes you gotta get your whole body into it. My whole body isn't doing it. A so little, this is not level on there. Yeah, Are you gonna stand it? It will be level in just a second. Okay, see now? And then the pressure of the clamp holds it right where we want. We just work our way down the table like that. Kind of quick, but... Quickish? Yep. Does the glue, does it harden or does it dry faster in cold? Uh, no, it takes it about an hour in warm temps. So we got a little extra open time with it right now since it's cold. But if it's like 100 degrees outside, it dries really quick. Well, lucky for us, it's really cold. Yeah, it's been snowing all day. It's about 45 in here. <laughs> all right, so we've got the one clamp on the end down here. And then these boards here are all kind of wanting to do their own thing. And that's where we're going to clamp here. That's why they are running across. I've just got some six inch clamps. Bring them in about right here over the edge of that. Bring the other clamp in, because you want a little bit of pressure. That's keeping those nice and level. Because this can wobble all you want. What you want to do is make sure that the bottom side which is the nice pretty side, is what you want to be level and even. We let the tabletop sit overnight so that the glue could get nice and set up. I'm just gonna pull all these clamps off and then I need to cut the ends to size because we left it a little long. This is about eight and a half feet right now. We only need it to be eight feet long. I'm using this sheetrock square, not just for sheetrock. I'm just gonna mark out a square edge right here and cut it off with the skill saw. I'm also going to be using the square as my cut guide. Because we didn't biscuit joint this like Jamie had suggested, we do have a couple high spots and low spots. I'm just gonna use this bench plane or hand plane and we're gonna zip some of the high spots down real quick. We shiplap the front on a live video, so now we're gonna be shiplapping the side, and then eventually we'll probably trim it out, and I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to throw this on there. So Zep's already pre-measured and cut the boards, and you wanna put the smooth side out, the rough side goes on the inside, and then after we get the first board in, we're going to have to use a spacer, so that way it's the same all the way across. All right, just make sure it's flush on the front. Okay. And then I still have our handy dandy uh, roller spacer that we used from the other day. <laughs> I'm just putting the nails in with this wireless Milwaukee nailer. You could also use a hammer and a nail. Yeah, there you go. Okay. The shorter pieces are a lot easier to work with than the longer pieces. Right.
All right, so we're gonna go shorter end on the bottom. You know, hold that there and I'll, I'll hopefully. I feel like you so mismeasured. I didn't. It's got a little bit of a gap that's gotta come down to over here. Here, hold that up there like that. Can you see it, Zeb? Yeah, I've always had the vision. No, I mean, can you see all the projects you're going to do for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can. I know you guys are probably shocked that we went with a reclaimed top. It's probably not as practical as a hard surface, but it really works with my design aesthetic. It cost this many dollars, which is also a win. And I love that this top came from wood that we pulled out of the home that it's living in. We gotta do a couple extra things to it. Gotta get the orbital sander out here and sand it and fill in some knot holes with some resin. But other than that, it's about ready to be sealed up and attached to the top. Oh, I don't know, like build like eight drawers and all that kind of jazz. We have decided to put the post towards the end of the top. So that way if we come in later with a heavier top, we're already set up for weight distribution. That was one of the deciding factors and we will trim it out to make it look a little better. The plan at this point is to stain and do a chippy finish on the bottom. And then the top is gonna be natural wood. So it's got a good contrast with all the white we have going on here. If you want to purchase the products that we use for DIY, make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com. It helps us out a ton and supports our channel with every purchase. Share this video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Hit the subscribe button.